from online, on site, TV, radio, satellite churches, Nigeria and all over the world. You are all welcome to church this evening in Jesus' name. My name is Erasmus Favor Dixon. It is my honor on behalf of our lead and our co-pastors, George and beautiful Emmanuel Izuma to welcome you to the Gateway Experience. Remember that the reason Gateway International Church exists is to help you genuinely encounter God. Please be sensitive and attentive to the Holy Spirit in this meeting. Make this your mountain of encounter today. You will never go back the same in Jesus' name. A few things I want to bring to your notice today. First, 2023 is our Zoe covenant year. The promise of 2023 is life in its fullness. May your life be the evidence of every covenant blessing of 2023 in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Testimony are a key part of worship. Any testimony you would hold today delays the manifestation of the next one. When a person says thank you, that's what God says, take more. Please go to the testimony stand by the entry foyer over there to record your testimonies. Remember that when we say I am gateway, it means that we belong to a unique community of believers. There are seven things that make us the church we are. We are a most friendly and a welcoming church. Someone make some noise in the house. We are a church for people who want to genuinely encounter God. We are a church. We are a church for people that want to genuinely encounter God. We are a church whose member put God first in everything. We are a church that imparts people with strength to handle whatever life brings. We are a church that turns ordinary people into leaders. We are a church that honors marriages and blesses family. We are a church whose, make, whose core assignment is so winning and church planting. And finally, for those on site here who desire to serve in any department of this church or to be connected in our G12 home cell group, 
or book counseling appointment. We have a welcome center at entry foyer at the entrance of the church where you can go for all inquiries and information. Please be part of our online ministry by following us on all social media platforms. Download the Gateway Connect app from either Play Store or App Store. And for those connected online, please contact our service managers for any information you need. Every message or material of this church is available at the Lighthouse Bookshop near the church gates. And remember to connect to the Author of Mercy from 11 p.m. to 12 midnight every Monday to Friday. Once again, you are welcome to the Gateway Experience. It's time for our covenant confession. At the count of three, we go. Please come and lift up our hands. One, two, three, we go. I am a citizen of God's kingdom. I am planted in the Gateway International Church. I live for God. I live by His word. I walk in His spirit. I am a partaker of the I Am Covenant. 2023 is my Zoe Covenant year, the God life. Today, in response to Romans 10, 8, verse 11, I reaffirm my confession of faith in Jesus Christ. I believe the truth that Jesus died and rose from the dead. I believe that his sacrifice paid the price for all my sins. I believe that he is seated in heaven with God the Father. I believe that he is coming back again to take me home. I believe that in him and through him I am blessed with all the blessings of God. I believe that Zoe empowers me for destiny dominion. I cannot fall. I am free from every dumb bondage. My DNA is supernatural. I am a burning and a shining light. Money multiplies in my hands. Goodness and mercy follows me at all times. Nations open their gates and treasures to me. I put God first. I pray my tithe. I am a soul winner. I serve in God's kingdom. My life works. My faith works. My relationship works. My business works. Everything works. I win every battle of destiny. My covenant place is at the topmost top. My birth, there is no sickness or death. Only good things are permuted in my life. There shall be no loss or evil report. I am, this year, I am an evidence of Zui. Please, someone turn to your neighbor and tell him or her, I am an evidence of Zui. Please, if you have any testimony from last year, Vigils of Destiny, we are available to record your testimony this year. Please just use one minute to turn to your neighbor and to your, to your left and right and ask him or her your name. Just one minute for friendship time. Welcome. You are the best. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thought we were clapping for Jesus. Can we do that better? Hallelujah. We thank God for today. I'm your brother, Joshua Vure. Here I serve under the church planting directorate. You want to pray? I want to take a corporate prayer. If you have your party with you, turn with me to seat 14, which is today. The topic says selected for significance. Can we say that together? <laughs> say, I am selected for significance. And then First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it said, But you are a royal generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light hallelujah hallelujah for some reason it's known to me god has handpicked you and singled you out for the best in life do you believe that therefore no curse is permitted to operate in your life do you also believe that today may that be your portion in jesus name and the inheritance of this will be enforced in your life in Jesus' name. 
Shall we rise on our feet as we pray? Let's lift up our hands and say, Father, we thank you for the blessings that I am chosen, that I am royalty. Father, I count this a great privilege that you have called me to a great life of impact and significance. Thank you, Jesus. Let's say thank you, Jesus, for that. Let's thank him, appreciate him. Lift up your voice and appreciate him. He has called us to a life of great significance and impact. He didn't call us to be mediocre. He didn't call us for anything less. We will not be small in life. We are selected for significance. We are selected for great impact. Let's appreciate God for that. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Father, for this great privilege you've given to us. Making us royal privilege, royal priesthood, royal people to show forth your glory in this dark generation. We say thank you, Abba Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. As a people, we say thank you as a church. We join the community of Christians all over the world to say thank you for this selection. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your hand and say, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I take my rightful place in God. I receive clean sin from every sin. From every sin. I blot out blot every out consequences every of wrong actions, of wrong actions by, the blood of Jesus. by the blood of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. We receive cleansing tonight. We receive cleansing from every wrong doing. Whatever want to hinder us from assessing the royalty that God has paid for us. Every guilt, every wrong doing, every error of the past. We plead the blood of Jesus. We come through the blood of Jesus. And we ask for total cleansing of our spirit, of our soul, of our body. Total cleansing. We receive this morning, this morning, by the blood of Jesus. Today we pray. Amen. Say, I declare. I declare that I am not cursed. I, I am not cursed. I am a candidate of joy. I am a candidate of joy. I'm not for sorrow. I am not for sorrow. I'm not for pain. I'm not for pain. I'm not for shame. I'm not for shame. I'm not for demonic oppression. I'm not for demonic oppression. I cannot go down. I cannot go down. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Make that declaration. You are a candidate for celebration. You are a candidate for great things. Sorrow is not our portion. Pain is not our portion. Shame is not for us. Demonic oppression is not our portion. Yes, today we are claiming by faith. We will not be there. In the name of Jesus. We work in dominion. We work in great things. We pass the angels by the seal of the Holy Ghost. We pass for greatness. In our life, by the seal of the Holy Ghost, by the fingers of the blood of the Lamb, we call for greatness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Lift up your hand and say, Father, Father, today, today, I receive, I receive every good, every good in this state, in this state, and in this country, and in this country. Say, Father, Father, today, today, I receive, I receive every good, every good in this state, in this state. And in this country, and in this country. Pray, that pray in the name of Jesus. Declare it in the name of Jesus. No curse is holding us back. Therefore, we reap the good things of this land. We have the permission to 
in Jesus name we pray amen now I'll pray for the church Jesus has paid the price that we should reign hallelujah so gateway international church should reign hallelujah amen so lift up your hands to heaven and say father father i bless gateway international church i bless gateway international in your church. name in today. your name today i bless all our projects i bless all our i projects. bless the vision of the church i bless all the vision of the church i bless all the project of the church i bless all the project I of bless the church i bless all the vision of the church i bless the Pray vision that of, of the church in the name of jesus let that name be blessed the name alone should be blessed in the heart of men in the ears of men gateway international church should be a blessing should read blessing should speak for favor accepted people will accept it by the seal of the holy ghost we bless the church in the name of the lord the church is living in this church is living Father, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the life, for the life, and the ministry, and the ministry of Pastor George Izuwa. Of Pastor George Izuwa. May the man and woman of God, may the man and woman of God, you have assigned, you have assigned for this great assignment. For this great assignment, may they be actualized. May they be actualized. May they be fulfilled. May they be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray for our Father and the Lord and our Mother and the Lord. Let the vision that God has given to them may be actualized, may be fulfilled. May God sponsor the vision for them. May God bring the vision to pass. 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 May God bring the vision to
Speaking tongues bless his name for the significance he has given to us already. Libra la bosha, lepa kaba la bosha, libra la bosha, lete de 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 ya kaba la bosha. For the greatness of Hamra di Kadaria, lete de 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 ya la 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 la. Libra kaba la bosha, handa la bosha, le kada da la da 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 bosha, le de 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 da bosha. We bless you, Lord, for your greatness upon our life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, today is our covenant day of fasting. If you know you are fasted, please, can you come forward? Papa said we should anoint you and pray with you. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your destiny. By the reason of disobedience, things will fall in pleasant places for you. It's well with your soul. You will not see shame. You will not see shame. You will not be disappointed. Good things is permitted in your life. There shall be no lost. It is well with your life. On the top shall you be. You will not go down. You are the light to your generation. Sir. You will shine in the midst of adversity. Sir. Nothing shall be able to bring you down. You are going higher. Above circumstances. Sir. Above situations. Sir. Above satanic arrow. No weapon form against you shall prosper. Your destiny preserver. You are going to possess your possession. You will sit on your throne. Huh? No, you will sit on your throne. Huh? You will not see shame. Huh? It is well with your soul. It is well with your destiny. It is well with your marriage. It is well with your children. Your destiny is preserved from glory to glory. From glory to glory. No more shame. No more sickness. No more failure. No more disappointment. Things will fall in pleasant places for you. You must be noticed for favor. The Lord will distinguish you. The hand of the Lord shall be upon you. He will preserve your going and coming out. No plans of hell over your life shall prevail. The covenant will preserve you. The covenant will preserve you. The covenant will preserve you. You will not be a failure. Your destiny is preserved. Everything about you shall be for the glory of God. Satan will not have dominion over your life and destiny. Every plot of hell over your life is shattered and cancelled. Every plan of Satan over your destiny shall not prevail. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. He will not allow you to see him. At every point he will show forth. At every corner he will show forth. All you need are supply. For he will supply all your needs eh, according to riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Eh. He will supply all your needs. Eh. At any point, he will show forth for you. At any junction, he will show forth for you. He will prove himself mightily. In the name of Jesus, eh, you will not see shame. Eh. Sickness will not see you. Untimely death is not your portion. Eh. Disappointment is not for you. Where others fail, you will succeed. Eh. Where others cry, you will not cry. Where others weep, you will not weep. Eh. Where others cry, you will not cry. You are distinguished for divine the covenant will preserve you. The covenant will keep you from shame and sorrow. The covenant will speak for you. The covenant will speak for you. Accident is not your portion. Failure is not your portion. Sickness is not your portion. In the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord is upon you. He will make the face of the continent to shine upon you. He will grant you his peace and favor. He will grant you his peace and favor. Nations open their gate to you. Nations open their gate to you. Where others fail, you will not fail. What stop other will not stop you. We are all that cry, you will not cry. It is well with your soul. It is well with your destiny. It is well with your marriage. It is well with your soul. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Let's enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus this evening? Is that how you celebrate your king? Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. We have confidence in the name of the Lord that when we come to him, he hears us and he answers our prayers. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
name your king. Maleke to reke nergedeza anaragadeya. You have lifted him up. You have called him your king. And now he's seated above your situation. He's seated above that circumstance. My God who reigned as king of the flood. He is stopping every flood of the enemy in your life. Zetele bareke to reke nergedeza nergedeya. Lebo bobo sa anaragadeza. Hakam dine lue. No matter what is going on in my life, oh Lord, you are Lord. No matter what is going on in my family, you are Lord. No matter what is going on in my country, you are Lord. No matter what is going on in my business, no matter what is going on in my body, you are Lord. In every situation and circumstance, you are King. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. And today, oh Lord, we impose your authority over every situation, over every negative circumstance. We proclaim your peace. We enforce your peace. We speak to every storm now. And we say storm be still. We say storm be still. We say situation come under control. We say sickness be healed. In the name of Jesus. Our God, you are king. Men may be presidents, but you are king. Men may be governors, but you are king. Men, maybe ministers, commissioners, though you are king. And Father, you hold the heart of every king in your hand. You hold the heart of every president in your hand. Today, we declare your rulership over this nation. We declare your rulership over this earth. And Father, turn the hearts of every king, of every president, of every governor. Turn their hearts in favor of your church. Turn their hearts in favor of your people. Turn their hearts in my favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You may be seated. Good evening, church. And good evening to every person who is watching us online via social media, via Get, uh, Life Center Network. You are welcome to this first of the two services we are having today. Believe me, the Spirit of the Lord is not hampered by distance. Whatever happens in this service will happen in your home, in your office, in your car, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus Christ. Church, just turn to the person on your left and right and just work on the person on my behalf. I can't come down to shake you, so just tell them the RP shaking you. <laughs> yeah, welcome to this service. Our father and mother are not in church today. As you know, today is the first day of the free medical abacana. So people are being ministered to both spiritually and physically over there right now on your behalf. Every blessing from that outreach, let it abide in you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask you to speak to your sons and daughters through me now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say, I am gateway. My covenant place is at the topmost top. Only good things are permitted in my life. Say today, I open my heart to the word of God. I believe that the word of God will touch my life. 
the word of God will work for me. And I know that my life will never, ever, ever remain the same again. In Jesus Christ's name, say amen. This is your month of enthronement. And in the Sunday services this month, Papa has been teaching on the series, Taking Your Place in High Places. This month and this year, you will take your place in high places. Amen. No matter what they think that they are doing, every government policy will work out in your favor. Amen. Even if they want to sell fuel for 1,000 naira per liter, you will have more than enough to buy it. Amen. You and your family will be cushioned from the storm. Amen. Today, I announced in the news that um, the CBN has floated naira. So naira is no longer, official rate is no longer 440 naira. Official rate will now go to 770. And wherever the black market goes to, official, mark, official rate will go along with that rate. But whatever it is, however high it goes, you will have more than enough. Yeah. No, matter the, no matter how, how harsh the wind gets, the eagle will always fly in the face of the wind. In fact, it is when the wind is roughest, that's when you see the strength of the eagle. And because you are an eagle, you will float and fly in the roughest winds in the name of Jesus. So today is the first class in our Gateway Bible Believers Master Classes, our GBBM. This is the first class for the month of June. And the emphasis for this month is spiritual skills for spiritual dominion. Spiritual skills for spiritual dominion. If you are going to take the high place in life, if you are going to dominate in every sphere in which you find yourself, there are some skills that you need to acquire and there are some things that you need to drop. So today, in this first service, we're talking about how to train the tongue and in the second service, we're talking about how to break bad habits. So my assignment for now is to teach you on how to train your tongue. Tell your tongue, tongue, today you will be trained. <laughs> now, a key verse is taken from Proverbs 18, verse 21. And it says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Job 6, verse 24 also tells us, says, Teach me, and I will hold my tongue. And cause me to understand wherein I have erred. Now what Job 6.24 tells us is that the tongue can be taught. The tongue can be taught. Now what is the tongue? The tongue is this uh, in your mouth, Abby. You see to taste. You use to lick. You use to swallow. You use to take ice cream. That is your tongue. Eh? And for human beings, you use it to talk. Without the tongue you cannot articulate words. Without your tongue, you can. If you see someone who is, well, that they have cut the person's tongue, right? Even if he cut only a part of the tongue off, what the person will do, uh, 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 he can't talk anymore, right? So the tongue is what makes you not to be dumb. Now, the word tongue appears 129 times in the Bible. In 126 different verses. For one word to be used 129 times, it means that word is important too. Yeah? <laughs> it's important. Because the Bible says life and death are inside this small thing. Not inside your brain. Not inside your tibia, femoral, the big bones in your body. It's inside this small muscle in your mouth. So the Bible talks about it 129 times. Now note three things about the tongue. Number one, the tongue has no morals of its own. Does it have mind? Does it have heart? It's just a muscle. It has no morality. The tongue's morality is the morality of the tongue user. The tongue's conscience is the conscience of the tongue's user. It has no conscience of its own. So it means that the tongue can be put to both good use and to bad use. A few instances. Psalm 52 verse 2 says, Thy tongue deviseth mischief. <laughs> Like a sharp razor walking deceitfully. Do you know any person like that? That the person, anytime the person opens his mouth, is to be fomenting trouble. 
In one family, he will go and tell this person what this person said. In another family, he will go and tell this person what this other person said. He will be planting half stories here and there and knocking one head against the other. That is a bad use of a tongue. And if you are like that, today, let your song, tongue receive circumcision. James 3 verse 6 Say the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Proverbs 12, verse 18 says, There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. Hey, this one is some people's knives that we look at and call them wife. We are looking at the man, envying him. Oh, this man, child, look at this. His tall yellow wife. Tall woman, very shaped, everything put together. But that woman I are admiring like that. The man is saying, who will take this body from me? He will stay out of his house till 11, 12, 1, because he is afraid of going home. Because that thing you are calling a wife is a knife that is cutting him to little bits every day. Speaking like the piercing of a sword. But then there's another kind of tongue. And that one, it says, the tongue of the wise is health. Proverbs 15 verse 4. It says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. But now the best tongue of all is the tongue in Proverbs 10 verse 20. That says, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. Let your tongue be like choice silver. Amen. I say, let your tongue be like choice silver. Amen. Second point to note. The output of the tongue depends on the input into the owner of the tongue. What the tongue releases it depends on what enters into the person using the tongue. Because what you feed on determines what others will feed out of. In Matthew 12, verse 34, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? The mouth speaks. Matthew 7, 17 to 18, it says, even so, every good fruit bringeth forth good, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth what? Evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth Good fruit. Obiojo will bring out bad actions. Bad actions. We are chatting in, um, we have a group called um, Strong Courts where we talk about family issues and family matters, do change and all that. I wanted to just table one matter and say that we should advise on the thing that this woman uh, did. By the time they gave all the facts, other people were giving opinion and talking about it. I forgot what the story was. If I remember, I'll still tell you. <laughs> but when I finally came into the room and saw the discussion, I said, look, this woman has a bad heart. Sorry, I'm coming to woman's side, though. I'm sorry. Men, we get our own side, but since this month is Father's Day, let me let us rest. Let me enter women. When on a tongue come and it comes like five times in the year, being a six, how many mothers do you not get? Six, I'll be ten. This is one eye. We must use it well. All you women here in church, you must not forget Father's Day. When are they here? You remember your fathers and wives, remember your husband. That day, don't tell them to come and take you out. You must take him out. To any way of his choice. And if he says that his present, his, his Father's Day present is moto, buy it for him. If no be moto, if he said that tire he wants, buy the tire for him. Anything he requests for, find the money and do it. This is our month, Father's Day. You have the rest of the year to do your Mother's Day. <laughs> but when I enter the matter, I say, look, bad heart is bad heart. And bad heart, you will see it manifest in simple things. That is kind of why people are talking about, I did this thing, so 
If you look this woman well, how to know them? You see them in church. You see the woman, she comes to church. Very well dressed. Her children looking very well dressed, very clean. And then another woman's child is living with her. Walking behind them, looking like something wearing, wearing beat. Another woman, another person's child living with her. Like the person behind her say, look after this person for me. And then somebody will look at the child and look at your child and be able to tell the difference. That is bad heart. That is bad heart. A woman with a good heart will receive another woman's child as her own child. Will look after that child like her own child. Will dress that child the same way her children dress. Will give that child the same food that her children eat. But a bad heart, a woman that has a small heart, doesn't have a large heart. When they are, when they are, fin she are finished eating, that's when she will now say, where is the leftover? Give to that person to eat. The Lord deliver you from that kind of heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. So a good tree will bring good fruit. And a bad tree will always bring out evil fruit. Number three point. When you use the tongue right, it has the capacity to do a lot of good. And when you use it wrongly, it can do a lot of evil. Proverbs 6 verse 24. It says, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Psalm 37 verse 10. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talks of judgment. The tongue can build up and the tongue can break down. The tongue can be the difference between a family having a blessed day and the family having a yeshua's day. The tongue can be the difference between a husband walking out of a house, feeling as if he's king of his world, and going out to go and slay dragons on, for his family, and he walking out feeling as if he's the lowest of the low. The man is working hard, trying to make ends meet, and when he comes back home and he says, uh, honey, this is what I brought. He said, <laughs> is this what your mates bring back home? <laughs> they, they, they just know the particular word to tell the man that would just deflate his balloon. Is this is this you you the whole day you went out the whole day and this is the only thing you could bring back? You don't see what your mates are doing. Hope your job. <laughs> Bad mind, no good. And then by the time he finished talking, him, talking the man, talking the man, talking the man, talking the man down. At night, when code is catching you, you now do and I say, Papa Jude. He say, Who is Papa Jude? <laughs> he hits your hand away. And five eleven men, let me face you now. Let me leave women alone. Women, sorry. You know you're my people. <laughs> you know, you know, you're my favorite people. Man, your wife steps out in the morning. She has finished dressing up. And she wants to go out. And she comes to you and says, honey, how do I look? <laughs> you know, he's a turn away. The following day, honey, how do I look? Oh, please, I'm busy, Joe. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to prepare that invoice to supply this money. The third day, how do I look? Look, you, okay, you look okay, you look okay, just go. By the time you do her that thing three, four, five, six days in a row, six times, your wife begins to feel as if there's something wrong with her. There's something wrong with her dress sense. That she's not equal to the other people that she sees out there on the road. And then you begin to expose her to the kind of influences that she should not be exposed to. You didn't, you didn't compliment her there, but as she gets to, to the office or to the market or wherever it is, somebody says, ah, and they are looking beautiful today. Kai, the man who is marrying you is enjoying. Child, you're looking so beautiful. Look at your hair. 
It begins to take every aspect of her appearance. Her hair, look at your nails, look at your shoes. And she's just lapping it up because the way the woman's heart is where? Through her ear. She keeps lapping it up. By the time you are not complimenting her and every other person is complimenting her, one day, the man will say, come, let's go and take lunch. And from taking lunch, one thing will lead to another. Why? Because you didn't use the power in your words. You use the power in your words. Words can build up and words can destroy. Words can be they can destroy. And sometimes, it's not even what you say, but what you refuse to say that can cause problems. There are times in a man's life where he needs somebody to speak up for you. I remember once, one of my friends, there was this girl that, that time we are, I was still in the world. It was not now that I'm, I'm saved and sanctified. But he was chasing this girl. And at that time, none of us had a plan to settle down. We are just playing the field. And this girl, tall, shapely, very responsible and umbra girl from my mother's place. <laughs> my friend was chasing her with power and she was resisting, but you could see the resistance slowly dropping because of his persistence and his appearance of responsibility and seriousness. Then one day, because while we were, I was, she, me and her, we could talk. You know how you and a girl you are not interested in. You are just friends. How you can gist. You can gist about practically anything. So we had that kind of Libya who could, we could talk freely between ourselves. So what is yours? I said, Mecca. This is your friend. How far? What, what does he really have in mind? <laughs> By the time I did that three, three times, I didn't have to say anything. <laughs> I just scratched my head three times. I didn't say a word. But she got the message. And that was the end of it. The relationship never went beyond that point. Later, he said, oh boy, this girl came to ask me, she, let me say that, she, that you are the one that told her not to. I said, why didn't you say anything? No. <laughs> I didn't say anything. He said, but what do you mean? I said, I didn't say anything. He said, how now? He said, look, she just came to ask me, say, what, what, I mean, are you see, what are your plans and all that for her and all that? And I just kept quiet. He said, you're keeping quiet and say the whole message now. <laughs> you're keeping quiet and said everything. If, if you, my, 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 my bone man, and today he's still, he's still one of my very good friends. If you, my bone man, could you speak up on my, on my, on my behalf to say, look, that I am, Husband material, 10,000 yards. If you couldn't do so, you will sabi me. What do, you, what do you think she would think? Now you don't spoil this matter. I said, oh boy, sorry. But in my mind, I was not sorry. <laughs> my mind, I was not sorry. Because I wasn't sure what he had in mind for that girl. Today, he settled down. His mind is going well. And she's also settled down with her husband. And her life is going on well. So it was as if I did a good thing by not saying anything. But there are times when your matter is hanging in the balance. And you need somebody to say something. When they are discussing whether to give you that contract, to give you that job, to do, to, to do something that can change your destiny, and somebody is there who knows you to the bone, and when your matter comes out, the person keeps quiet. May that kind of person not be part of your life. May the Lord give you men so that when there is a council at the gates concerning your destiny, the person will stand up to speak for you. Amen. But it is very important for you to have that kind of people to, for, to, you must have a track record of being good to people. Because it's the good that you do that in the day when your matter is being discussed, that good will speak for you then. Because the person will remember the history of goodness and say, look, I know this man who can deal with him. Give it to him. You will never know. 
there are some people that I look at them and I don't realize that the day that their matter came up in my presence, I had, I had a word in my mouth to speak on their behalf. But because I know that this man is not a good person, I refuse to speak. That's why it's good if you are doing work for people. Do the work well, though. It's one work that causes another work. If you do a job for me, I do it badly. And then somebody tomorrow now comes and says, look, I want to give that man work. Do you know him? I say, yes. Should I give him? I say, no. You, will, you, you won't know that I'm the one that blocked it because you never hear about the job. But the bad work you did for me, there are some people that they did work for me and somebody needed that, that same kind of job done. And because of the way they did it, I couldn't recommend them. Some people are door openers, though. They may not look like much. But they are, they are connected to people who are connected to people who are connected to people that if you just mention your name once, your life has changed. Don't despise the man sitting next to you. You don't know who he knows. So why is the tongue is so important? Why is the tongue so important? Number one, your tongue says the atmosphere of your life. It says the atmosphere of your life. The Bible says in Proverbs 18.21 that life and death are in the power of the, of the tongue. Brothers and sisters, we may all live on the same earth, but we don't live in the same world. Do you know that? We all live on the same earth. You and me, we are living in the same space of Port Harcourt, but we don't live in the same world of Port Harcourt. As you are here thinking about, hey, I need to, I was, I'm, I'm a big man, but I need to sell my SUV. Because before, if I use 10,000, I, I will fill the tank. Now to fill my tank, I need to bottle like 70,000 naira to fill the tank. As you are there thinking about how to sell that car, and now I'm thinking how to buy a bra brand new 10. That he'll be spending 100,000 naira for one, to fill it for one week. You want to say oh, he wants to buy 10 new ones. And both of you are living in the same potacot. But you're not living in the same world. <laughs> His world and own are very different. But the thing here is that we create our world with the words that we speak. Our words create our world. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And out of the abundance of the thoughts of a man, sir, that's what he speaks from. So if your world is a world filled with negativity, poverty, loss, pain, it is because of the things that you are continually speaking out. Your words define your world. So if you want to change your world, begin to change your words. No matter what you see in the country, begin to change your words. Since the day President Buhari, I mean, uh, Buh not Buhari, Tinubu, uh, all I see, Bubu, <laughs> Tinubu Buhari, all oh, this. Since the day he took over office, I said, this government is my government. It's my government. It must do me good. It must do me good. This one will open doors for me. This is the type of my revelation. I've been saying it since the first day he came into office. I don't know the man from Adam. If I've been passing for the streets, I wouldn't, he, would, he would recognize me. But his government is my government. It's this government that will see me enter upon my throne. Mark it. In this government, you will see a Mecca of Joko seated upon his throne. And I want you to say to yourself now, in this government, you will see Put your name. In this government, you will see a Mecca Ojoko seated on his throne. Say it again. In this government, you will see a Mecca Ojoko seated on his throne. Now walk to two people. Tell them, in this government, you will see a Mecca Ojoko seated on the throne. Turn to another person and say, in this government, you will see Emeka Ojoko seated on the throne. 
Keep on saying it. Keep on saying it. They will have no choice but to favor you. They will have no choice. Somehow, circumstances will change and shift and move somehow. And you find yourself walking in billions. Somehow. Just keep saying it. This government is your government. Anyone that comes to your government. Whoever sits upon the throne, my father is still the king of kings. Whoever. Any person who sit on there now, my father and I put them. And he put it for me. Thank you, whoever sat down. He put it for you. I has no choice but to favor you. Any policy that he puts in place will favor you. Will favor you. Your words will create your world. You create your world. If your neighbor wants to talk nonsense, don't join them. If his government is not your, don't worry, it's my government. When, I, when the money comes, I will look after you, don't worry. I will take care of you, don't worry. Keep talking your own, but this government is my government. It must favor me. I said it must favor me. Your words set the atmosphere for your life. Whatever you speak, that's what you will see. Whatever you say, that's what you will get. So learn to speak right words. Don't be moved by this negativity. Tinubu will do me good. Sim will do me good. Whoever is there, Bajabi Abela will do me good. All of them, they are commanded to do me good. Now my papa put them. Now my papa put them. They have no choice. Why is the tongue important? Number two, it says the relationships of your life. It says the relationships of your life. Positive people attract positive people. Negative people attract negative people. If you check the people who are around you, eh, if you just do an audit of the kind of people around you, you find that the people who are around you are people who are very much like you. Somebody said one thing once that made me, I had to do an audit of my friends. He said, if you check the net worth of the five people who are closest to you, eh, combine everything that they have, calculate, and calculate everything that they own, that is your, your future. <laughs> it's your future. So if you look at everybody around you and all of them, if you count everything they have, you know reach $1,000. Your future is $1,000. It's not big money. One thousand dollar that is seven hundred seventy thousand naira. It's not big money. It's the kind of money that Hidabasi took to club and finished in one night. In one night of groove, she burned that amount. If you check the people around you, their combined net worth is one million naira. Change those people. <laughs> Change them. Because you are looking at your future. You become like the people that you, that you relate with. And they become like you. But you see, the words you speak is what attracts the kind of people who surround you. What comes out of your mouth? The kind of relationship that you have. If you're a person who is always talking positive, it's either negative people around you will change or they will run. But if negativity is comfortable staying around you, it means that you are a negative person because like poles attract. Like poles attract. So, check your friends. <laughs> Wings of similar plumage congregate on the same horizon. If you don't understand the, the grammar, I just say birds of the same feather flock together. <laughs> Avian species of similar plumage float on the same horizon. That's particle of no? So, your friends reflect you. They reflect you. So, look around at them. If 
You don't like the kind of friends you see around you. Understand that you need to you need to change you. When you change you, they will drop. Is that they change or they drop? Because your words change, your attitude changes. You're no longer content to do this, the same old things I used to do with them. And they have to f- drop away. So your words set the relationships in your life. Proverbs 24, verse 26. He said, Every man shall kiss his lips that give it the right answer. If your words are always bringing out sweet things, people who like sweet things will gather around you. If your words are always giving out bitterness, people whose currency is bitterness will be the ones hanging around you. So your words determine your relationships. Number three, why are words important? Why is your tongue important? Your tongue sets up the open doors that you need in life. Your tongue sets up the open doors you need in life. In Proverbs 22, verse 11, it says, He that loves pureness of his of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. If you are speaking out of a pure heart and out of grace-filled lips, kings shall be your friend. Father, by dint of this word, of this paragraph, Doye Diri shall be my friend. By dint of this paragraph, by reason of this word, Siminia Life Ubara shall be my friend. By reason of this word, Bola Ahmed Tudubu shall be my bone man. But it comes by the grace in your lips. Can the king sit with you and find strength from the words of your mouth? Can grace come out of you to encourage him, to advise him, to counsel him, to strengthen him? Can he have a problem and he comes to you to discuss with you and leads with a solution? The king may not be the president. He may not be the governor. But he may be the MD of a company. He may be the principal of a school. He, he's the head of an organization around you. Can he come into your presence and receive grace from your lips? Are you an ever-flowing spring of wisdom? Are you a solution provider? Or you are a problem causer? People are looking for who is all problem for them. The thing all of us gather here in this church is because Papa is a solution provider. Out of his body, out of his mouth, solutions are always coming. Whenever he talks, a problem is solved. A challenge is dissolved. A mystery is dissolved. He is a solution provider and the world is looking for solution providers. So when grace is to be found in your lips, when comfort, edification is to be found in your lips, when your words are always soaked with wisdom, and I'm talking about a level of wisdom that people don't don't understand where you got it from. When you answer questions, they say, which book can you read to to, 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 to be able to understand things like this? In this life, you have not gotten to the pinnacle of success until when somebody thinks of a particular area and it's only your name that comes to mind. When you get to the point where if people are thinking of this particular subject, it's your name and your name only that they can think, you can write your own ticket anywhere. Brothers and sisters, become known for something. Become known for a problem that only you can solve. So that when, they, when, when, when Pharaoh had a problem, it was only one person they could think about. Not so. And the man was in prison. The king said, bring him out of prison. His sentence of, of death revoked. Bring him, put him in the palace. Because he was the only one to solve the problem. 
When Belshazzar had a problem, who was the person they could think about? Only one man, Daniel. Then they had been demoted. He was no longer in government. The king said, bring him out of obscurity. Put him in the council. Let me be listening to him every day. What are you working on being known for? So that people can find grace on your lips. I was teaching in GBI yesterday. I told them, you have over 500 to 700 abilities in you that you don't know about. Studies have shown there are 500 to 700 things in the average human being that you have not tapped. You don't, you don't know you have it in you. You don't know. How do you identify that thing? One clue. What is the thing that anytime they call you to do it, you will do it without asking money for it because you just love doing it. Can you think of that thing? Can you think of that thing? If there's anything in your, in your life that anytime they call you, say, come and do this thing, even if they are not paying you for it, you will jump out. Morning, noon, midnight, you will jump out and do it without asking for money. Just for the joy of that thing. That thing holds the key to your destiny. You will become so good at doing that thing if as long as you keep doing it that one day people will pay you money for that thing that you like doing before without money. Am I communicating? I'll give you that one free of charge. Number four. Why is the tongue so important? The tongue says the destination of your life and the manifestations in your life. It says the destination of your life and the manifestations in your life. Proverbs 18 verse 20 says that a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. The things you say determine what is waiting for you in your future. The things you set up, the visions you speak out, determine the things that you are working towards to fulfill. So your words will set your destination and will determine the manifestations in your life. So what are the benefits of a tongue that speaks rightly? What are the benefits? Number one, a pleasant tongue, a right tongue, will make you a pleasant and pleasing personality. Pleasant and pleasing personality. People just like to hang around you. Proverbs 16 verse 13. It says, righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. When you are, when your tongue is habitually speaking right words, people will just love you. Because anytime they come around you, you make them feel better. If you see a man eh, who has been married for 25, 30 years, and his wife is still laughing around him and doing like a, like a small girl of 21, he's a man who knows how to use right words. He knows how to boost his wife. He knows how to fill her love tank all the time. You see a 70, 65 year old woman. She's in the You see people just playing like, like small children. You say, look at this, look at these gray haired people. Though. Why is he full everywhere? Does he do like small picking? It's people who have known how to, how to talk to each other. How to bring out the best in each other with the use of words. One thing I learned very early, thank God for that book that I read that time. I don't know what happened with the book. I didn't finish it in loss, but the things I learned from it. Huh. You will never, never, never. I said this, never. Hear me speak a negative word 
about my wife publicly. Never. I can sometimes I can be a little bit harsh. She will say I'm being harsh when she does something that annoys me. I can be harsh. But in public, huh? Korea come. Asampete. Why your ma? The one who makes my only only good words in public. In private, the same thing too. But no matter, even if we even if we are, I am angry at something she did, that anger cannot pass that night. It can't pass that night. Because if I if I'm angry with her, I, I, I the verse with God now. She is God's representative in my, in my bed. I can't be vexing with the God that we pray to in the morning and praying to him and say, Lord, no allow witches to kill me. And I'm angry with him. No. So we must settle that night before the following morning. So I have learned what my wife loves. She likes her love language, let me is touch. And quality time. So she likes you I don't see, but if me had a pastor, I said for puppy, she go won't kiss me in public. She won't allow me, but once in a while I will agree. Once in a while, I will like on puppets. If it's outside inside on church compound, as I see her must hold and kiss her. Eh? I know she she likes it. My husband is loving me. She likes it. I don't hold and kiss her in public. That one can keep her going for like two weeks. <laughs> for like two weeks. That, one, that single one. I can do things that will annoy her in the house. She's angry, but when she she remember that kiss for church in the in the nation of Igwe Mado. I, I forgive my husband, no Jerry. So keep depositing in your spouse's love tank. Keep depositing because there are times you make withdrawal. Withdrawal are the times you do things that are wrong, that, that, that annoy the person. Because every person will cause offense. Not be so. You are not perfect. You will cause offense one day. But one time she places it on the scale. This thing when you do, as this thing when you do things, let me leave it to Jare. But when your, your wife's memories of you is full of negativity, the day where you do one small one, you wake up in the night and person hold your organ and knife for a hand. <laughs> you begin to say, my wife, I beg you. Honey, I'm sorry. You never reach like that. Biko, pass it, see. You begin to speak the language on the face of the earth. So, if you have pleasant, pleasing personality, is the benefit of a right talk. People just love being around you. Number two, benefit. Is quality relationships. Quality relationships. Proverbs 14 verse 7. It says, Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. So, foolishness, lips without knowledge, drives people. But wisdom, lips with knowledge, draws people. So you have quality people in your life when wisdom, right words are always flowing from your lips. I need to rush now. My time is almost up. Number three, benefit. Your heart desires will be fulfilled. The things you want will come. Psalm 21 verse 2. It says, Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withholden the request of his lips. When your mouth is always speaking good things, the things you are pursuing will come to you. People take pleasure in giving to you. Number four, you have a good health and good life. Proverbs 15 verse 4, it says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Proverbs 18 verse 21, Life and death are in the power of a tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, speaking rightly renews your youth. 
if you see me among all my friends now, all of them, they are, they are better on to white. All of them. But see me, I'm still looking like, I'm still looking, I know fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Am I not fresh? Talk, talk me talk. Fresh like market square bread. <laughs> the benefit of wisdom. Good height and good life. And number five. Upward mobility. Right words lead to upward mobility. Proverbs 15 verse 24. New King James. New King James. Proverbs 15 verse 24. New King James. It says the way of life winds upward for the wise. That he may turn away from hell below. When you are, when your words are always speaking right, it's upward trajectory. It's up, up all the time. No down, down for you. People are looking for ways to do you good. They're looking for ways to help you. They just like you. They tell you in any company, the person, the person who rises the fastest is the one that all his bosses are always speaking well about him. And your boss can never speak well about you if you're not a person that is pleasant. They like to be around. So how do you train your tongue to this level? Now, James 3 verse 8 says that, James 3 verse 8, he says the tongue can no man tame. <laughs> it's an unruly evil. Full of deadly poison. I don't know why James would have said that one. Which woman could don't do I'm shaking? <laughs> when they can talk that thing. But look at what Peter said in Fe Peter 3 verse 10. Fe Peter 3 verse 10. He says, He that will love life and see good days. First Peter 3 verse 10. He that will love life and see good days. Let him do what? Refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. So John's, James says the tongue can no man tame. Peter says let him refrain his tongue. That means you can refrain your tongue. You can train it. You can train it. So don't people say, eh, hey, that's what they make me. That's what I be from when I'm small. That's why they talk. Manage me like that. Who will not go manage you like that? You can change. Bible says you can change. I will give you plenty of scripture that tell you that you can change. You can change. Don't say that's why I be, that's why they talk. You can change. Papa told you about his mother and how his mother and his father were having problems. Quare, 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 quare. Until the day that he Dahosa, they went to meet Dahosa for, and he, he now called them into the room and spoke to them, spoke to them, spoke to the father, then called the mother in and spoke to her. And as she came out of the room, from that day, problem died. Peace came into their home. And then many years after, when he was asking the mother, what happened? What kind of deliverance did the Dahosa perform on you that day? What kind of deliverance? What kind of prayer? That man is a mighty man of God. He just changed you from a shoe to a piece of paper. How happened? He said, he just told me, whenever something happens that makes him want to talk, I should don't talk. I should keep quiet. <laughs> it was one word of wisdom that quenched fire in their home. Say, don't talk. And Christ is died. So you can train your tongue. So how do you train your tongue? Number one. Fill your heart with the word of God. Fill your heart with the word of God. Proverbs 4 verse 3 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart flows what the issues of life. Out of your heart. Then Psalms 119 verse 11 says that, Your word have I hid, that I don't want, hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against you. So when you hide the word of God in your heart, it helps to keep your tongue in check because it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth will. Number two. Dwell on pleasant thoughts only. You have a choice to dwell on the negative or to dwell on the positive. You have a choice. 
Philippians 4 verse 8 says, whatever things are true, whatever things, give me the scripture, whatever things are honest, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, whatever things are of virtue, he says, think on those things. Those thoughts are what creates the pictures in your heart. And you speak out of the pictures in your heart. In my home, I can choose to dwell on the negative things that my wife has done or to dwell on her positives. She has plenty positives and a few negatives. A few. If you see me for this, my life, eh? I, all my things, I like to keep them in a particular way. I arrange my things like this. I keep my clothes in the cupboard like this. The same place all the time. I don't like change. I like to just keep things where I can find them. My wife, hi. She just likes change for the sake of change. <laughs> I will keep something here. She will remove it. I will keep something. The day she came to my office and looked at my office, well, that's why we are still dating. Put on my office table and it looked too scattered. I, and she, she wanted to talk. I said, don't touch it. That place is scattered. I know where everything is. I know where everything is. It looks scattered to you, but for me, it's perfectly in order. If you rearrange it, you have scattered my life. <laughs> Leave it. Anything you ask me for, I put hand there, I'll pull it out. I put it and pull it out. Don't arrange it for me. Leave it like that. But that is my office. I can claim rights in the house. It's her office. <laughs> so I have to endure. One day I wake up. When this clothes, I've not used it for a very, very long time. She'll carry it and go and dash it out. It's true, I've used it for a long time, but I, the cloth is still there. I remember it. So maybe after one year, I'll start looking for, hey, where is that my shirt? Where is that my shirt? She will keep quiet. She just do as if she's not hearing me. <laughs> Where is that my shirt? Where is that my shirt? Where is that my shirt? She said, which shirt? I'll start describing, describing. He said, oh, oh that one. I, I've given it out now. Did you tell me? It's not our shirt. <laughs> Since when your property turned to, turn to your property, it's our property, so I can give it out. How, when do you use it last? I said, the shirt is still good now. Even if I don't use it, I see, at least one day I will use it. He said, it's taking up space in the house. Let's clear out the space so more new things can come. I will fume for a few minutes and then I will just leave it and move on. But, if not for Jesus, those things you send back to your father's house, it can be annoying. <laughs> but I choose to focus on her good parts. And my wife has very good parts. Hey, you sure you know now. Very good parts. Very generous woman. Very generous woman. I can count how many times that she's, we are, we are looking for money to do something in the house. And somebody comes and cries out to her that, look, something wants to happen. My children don't want it. She will carry all her money and give to the person. When I were here, I will start, I say, oh, for goodness, we have problem too now. Why will you give her, will you keep small frozen in the house? She said, don't worry, God will supply. I got one verse. Then I will remember, he that lendeth to the poor, he that giveth to the poor, Lord, is lending to the Lord. He's lending to the Lord. And the Lord said he will repay. So I say, okay, Lord. As she's helping other people's children to go to school with all this one, even though me, I'm, I'm not supporting her to give, but I'm top, me, me and her born the children. So, <laughs> my children will not find how to pay their school fees. Me, I can calculate. She can be very impulsive. I can calculate. And sometimes it can cause clash if you don't manage it well. Ah, my time don't finish it. So dwell on the good things. Number three, set a guard on your lips. Set a guard on your lips. 
This one where I say for when I wait to say I na so I be na so I be. No be so you be. You can control it. Psalm thirty nine verse one says, "I will take Psalm thirty nine verse one. I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me." You know what a bridle is? This thing that used to tie horse mouth. He says, "I will put that kind of thing on my mouth so I will not talk nonsense." Job twenty seven verse four says, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. So you see plenty of scripture that tells you you have control over what comes out of your mouth. So don't say that, so I be. You just, want to, you just wanted to say it. You, have, you lack self-control. <laughs> so what do you do to guard your lips? Never speak in the heart in the, in the heat of anger. Never. Especially with those who are close to you. The Bible says anger rests in the bosom of fools. So when you speak out of anger to your loved ones, you will, you will talk foolishness. No matter how wise you are, at that point, it's only foolishness that will be coming out. So in my home, you will never hear me talk to my wife in anger. I'm angry, but that night, I pray about it, I let you go. We will discuss it in three weeks' time. I will set a date in my calendar. I'll look for a way that thing will bring it over to this. In two weeks, three weeks, one week, we'll discuss it. But we'll stay in peace. I forgive her. We've let go. But one night, when we are gisting, I'll just put the thing up as if it's gist. And the point I wanted to make, we'll make it there. But that time, we will laugh over it and come to a pleasant conclusion, not out of quarrel. Last night, Tinubu wanted to enter my bedroom. I was talking something. She was talking her own and heat was about to... I said, honey, I need to sleep. Tomorrow I'm taking the children to school. We need to sleep. Tomorrow we'll continue to talk. She said, no, let's talk it though. There's sleep has vanished from my eye. I can't sleep. I said, no lie. You, you, it's me that be looking for sleep. You, as soon as your head touch this pillow, you will sleep. And through, through, I was still struggling with sleep. Small that I don't have... She don't sleep good. She don't sleep good. But I had to terminate this at that point because we were getting a little bit hot and bothered. Because this government, that's my government, she don't like them. <laughs> so, never speak in heat of anger. Number two, always watch the, always weigh the effect of your words. The first of what you want to say before you say it. Think about it. Whatever you want to say at that point, think about it well before you say it. Ask yourself, is it the right time to say it? Is the person in the right mood for this kind of thing? One of my friends, if you want to talk serious matter, now for midnight, two o'clock, you go, you go, two o'clock, you go tap your wife. Madam, wake up. There's something you want to discuss. Two man wants to sleep, you say 2 a.m. So quarrel, yeah, they, are, they are agreeing with some of you, you know what I'm talking about. Quarrel is always in that home because 2 a.m., that's why he wants to discuss matter. That time when witches are flying about doing their business, why you want to discuss serious issues? So is it the right time to discuss it? Is this the right way to discuss it? How do you present it in a way that the person can accept it and not try to defend or be defensive? The words you use, they matter. But we'll take that one in a class on communication in marriage. It's a course on its own. How to talk to your spouse. Number four, Abi. Number four, and final thing. So, no, I've given you, I gave you three. I said number one is fill your heart with the word of God. Number two, dwell on pleasant thoughts. Number three, set a guard on your lips. And then number four, and finally, submit to the control of the indwelling spirit. First Corinthians three sixteen tells that you, you have, you are the temple of God. The spirit of God dwells inside of you. He dwells inside of you. Psalm 141 verse 3. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. So the Lord who dwells inside of you can keep your mouth from saying some things. Can keep your mouth from saying some things. Romans 8 verse 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
There are times that I have wanted to say some things to some people, and Holy Ghost says, stop, don't say it. Don't say it. After, that's when I realized, if I had said that thing, I would have caused some serious damage to that relationship. So when you, are, when you are under the control of Holy Spirit, there are some words that will never ever come out of your mouth. So this will never come out of your mouth. And as you do these four things, may that unruly tongue come under control in the name of Jesus Christ. So what are the four things that I said? How do you train your tongue? Let's take them together now. For in summary, number one, fill the house with the word of God. Number two, Dwell on pleasant thoughts. Number three, set a guard on your lips. And number four, submit to the control of the Holy Spirit. You've been, you've been a good class. Rise to your feet. You are good students. If you can do these four things, you will be a winsome and pleasant personality. Now as we close, remember the last thing I said was that you must submit to the control of the indwelling spirit. That means if Holy Ghost is not inside of you, you have no hope of being able to keep a guard to train your tongue. So it starts with receiving Holy Ghost. It starts with being born again. Or if you are born again and you battle this, then it means you need to come back to him so he can resume his place in you and begin to help you bring your tongue under control. So if you are here, you are not born again or you're born again and you have lost that connection with God through his spirit, just place your hand upon your chest. Place your right hand upon your chest and just say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come back to you. I believe in you. And today I acknowledge you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come, let's walk this life together. In your precious name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, please just walk to the front. Organist, can you come and give me some background? If you pray that prayer, can you just walk to the front? Church, raise your hand above your head and just begin to, whatever you learned out of this teaching, whatever you learned, please just um, share with the Lord any vows you are making to him now, any areas that you are saying you are going to change. Ask him for grace, ask him for strength, ask him for wisdom to apply the decisions that you have just made I don't know what it is I don't know what change you have said that what, what, what struck you, what resonated with you and you said in this area I'm going to make a change and this is who I want to become because of what I just heard just share that dream share that hope share that aspiration with him in one minute If you pray the prayer of salvation, just come down to the front, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Mighty and everlasting King, we bless your name. We thank you for the words that we have heard. We ask you, Lord, for grace to implement those words. We ask for wisdom to, to do the right things. And the Lord, you will give the results to our actions in the name of Jesus Christ. We come under the control of your spirit. And from today, Lord, by your spirit, a guard is upon our lips. We will speak only right words. We will speak only pleasant words. And as we give off a pleasant, pleasant, winsome personality, Lord, draw the right relationships to us. Let doors that we are closed open to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You may be seated. Now it's time to take our tithes and our offerings. So if you're here with your tithes, you're here with your offerings, just quickly walk down to the front with your tithes. If you have your offering with you, you can raise it above your head. Those of you paying your offering, I mean, returning your tithes, walk to the front, please. And raise your offering above your head. Father, we thank you once again for, for life. We thank you, Lord, for the heart you have given to us to recognize that our tithes belong to you. 
and we are only returning to you what is yours. As we return our tithes to you now, we ask, Lord, for the windows of heaven to open over us. We ask for a blessing upon every walk of our hands. And Lord, we declare that our seed, our children, born and unborn, are consecrated by this tithing in the name of Jesus Christ. For everyone paying the offerings now, I declare over you full measure, pressed down, shaking together, shall men give unto your bosom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Quickly, you can pay your tithes, you can pay your offerings, the account numbers are on the screen. I can't see, are there any announcements? Is the announcement book available? This one is not working. I'll put it up at my back so I can read from there. ICT. Okay, so the free, um, well, the free medical program is on in Bacana. Those of you who couldn't join the train can always get there by yourselves tomorrow. Vigils of Destiny coming up in July. Give a lot of shout of praise. God <laughs> will be here live. They will be here live. Okay? 7, 14, 21st, and 28th. Now, our G2 of Communion service holds this coming Sunday. Okay? The time is 5 p.m. as normal. GBI is on. June edition of GBI is on. So, please... Go and register. GBI is our training program for workers and leaders of a church. If you want to rise in leadership capacity in the church and in society, please register for that program so that you can be trained. Okay? The program has started, started on Monday, but we can still take on some new people. So please pick up your form at the information center and join the training. Father's Day celebration. Fathers in the house, give a woo, 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 woo. Women, don't forget also, is this Satu Satu Saturday, Abby? On Saturday, we have a film show and variety night. Time is 5 p.m. And on Sunday, we have our Thanksgiving services for the fathers. Then the women are having their cultural day on Saturday, the 17th. On Father's Day, these women, <laughs> oh God. On Father's Day, don't worry, we'll go see that day. We will know. <laughs> on Saturday, time is 9 a.m. and the venue is at Bethesda. Women, come out in your beauty. Let us admire you. And on George Zuma Foundation, the free medical is going on, as I said, in Bacana. Wednesday to Friday at Bacana Civic Center over there across the waters. The fake clinic holds on Friday. The 16th time is 9 a.m. And the week's theme is war against those who are closing your well. Any well that the Lord has opened for you that somebody is closing, they will come down by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. On Tuesday, but see orientation for MT1 starts. The time is 5 p.m. and the venue is Abundance Hall. Is that the last announcement? Altar of mercy tonight. Live from Bacana, Papa will be ministering to us. 11 p.m. to 12 midnight, please be available online to catch up with Papa. And then uh, music school is on. 8.30 p.m. every weekend. The time is, no? Yeah, no, 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the weekends. And then 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. on weekdays. Go to the Welcome Center and pick up your form if you want to be trained in the use of a musical instrument or to improve on your musical performance. Is that all? Yes, I think that's all. Rise to your feet, church. Rise to your feet. Now, we're going to end this service by you walking to how many people now? Seven people. And telling them, this administration, remember what we started with? This administration is my administration. So, walk to seven people. Say, this government is my government. This government is my government. This government is my government. This administration is my administration. This administration is my administration. It will do me good in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you are coming for the very, very first time, this is your first time stepping foot in this house, please come to the front. If you are coming for the very first time, come to the front as the second service begins, takes off.
If it's your first time in Gateway Church, please come to the front. Come to the front, please. Any other person? Go with God. You are the best. Go 